We're building a prototype car and we haven't tested it like years and years after. Every moment, every day, every minute, something can go wrong and you don't know if you can fix it. There's a lot of pressure being the team manager. I mean, you're, you are the one that, that has to carry the weight of the team. The, the, you know, we like to say the buck stops with me. Um, if there's anything on the team that's not quite right, then that's my fault. I have to, I have to go out and I have to fix that. Um, and the, that can start to weigh on you after a while. After I've joined the Bridgestone Well Solar Challenge, I knew I have to get out of the office. Actually changed it, my life. It's very different than living in the Netherlands. It was kind of exciting because yeah, we, we sleep in tents and there's wind and there's heat and uh, you don't have really tap water to cook with and stuff. So that's that's an amazing experience. This is like the one of the biggest student competitions there is. So that's it's really challenging. It's not not just about building a car, but also about survival and team spirits. It's cool. The team of the panel of the team is very difficult. I think it's a very difficult challenge for us. I knew it was very difficult for me. I've been working for a year and a half for a year. I didn't think it was a mistake. I think it was a mistake for this race. There's a lot more than just winning, but it is nice to win. It's nice to win. In 2019, the 15th edition of the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge, this event's been running since 1987 and they consider this the most prestigious of all the solar car events around the world. Why? Well, mainly because it's such a great adventure and it's so difficult. We make no excuse that it's the most difficult, the most expensive and the most challenging of all the solar challenges. Teams want to win so badly because it's for their own prestige. There's no purse in this event. We, we're unique. We've never had a purse in this event. So there's no monetary prize. The prize is in the prestige of their achievement. Uh, Challenger class cars, the traditional solar cars, the original solar challenge. Can you drive from Darwin to Adelaide on the power of the sun? You'd set off from Darwin and you drive as far as you can until five o'clock at night. Then you make camp in the desert wherever you are and the next day you carry on. And we're seeing the, the superstar cars doing that in four days. And the cruiser class, our cruiser class teams, are born out of the fact there are those institutions who were looking for something different. They wanted to do something more than just driving from Darwin to Adelaide on solar power. They wanted to create a practical car, a car that the general public might see as something that they could aspire to. So to build a car that will not only perform and travel maybe a thousand kilometres before needing any external support and be a car that looks like a car, feels like a car, drives like a car uh, amongst normal traffic, that's the, the uh, rationale behind the cruiser class. What a wonderful field we've got. You know we've got the best teams in the world here and there are those that have come to be part of it and there's those that have come and they're hungry for the win. And really it can be anybody's and we have to look at Vattenfall, Tokai, Michigan, Agoria. There's a number of teams that, that could take their line on us. The Bridgestone Partnership is tremendously important to the events and they recognise our event as such a good fit to their three social pillars of mobility, young people and the environment. And that's exactly what the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge is all about. So, ですね。本当にもう大会においてもこのソーラーカーにおいても重要なパーツの一つなので、ま、自分たちにとってもこの3000キロま、過酷なレースを行うにおいてはま、欠かせない一つのパーツなので、ま、そのブリヂストンとま、
、まあ、例えば自分たちの東レですとかそのカーボンのボディでしたり、まあ、そういうところにおいてもいろんな日本の企業と協力してやってこれましたし。ブリッジスタインズのソーシャルスポンサビリティーは私は本当にそれを知っているので、私は本当にそれを知っているので、私は本当にそれを知From a business point of view, the Ecopia tyre Bridgestone have developed has, which, which gets tested and pushed to its limits at this event, so it has less rolling resistance. And to explain how that works, so literally the rubber on the road, if you were to get a tyre、uh, made, Bridgestone made Ecopia tyre, and a normal tyre from someone else, if you literally push them down the road, it's not that the Bridgestone Ecopia tyre would go faster, but it would roll longer. There's less rolling resistance. And what that means is that in fact you use less fuel, and that is how it's better for the planet. But having said that, Bridgestone have a, a, honestly a pinpoint sharp focus on, on people mobility, the environment, and no event does it better than this event. So that, that's why they're involved, and, and it's not just that they're involved, they're so much a part of it. And when they first spoke to me, their enthusiasm for the event got me very interested. But again, I keep saying I came to it as a motoring enthusiast and then found it, it is much, much more, it is so much more than that. And as a parent of four children that have to live on this planet, Well, after I'm gone,、uh, I, think, I, th I think I'd be mad not to be involved in this because you know, we're trying to better the future that my children and my children's children will live in. The World Solar Challenge to me is a,、um, an adventure. So, and it's an adventure in many different aspects. So the adventure of being able to go on the challenge and coming down and seeing the centre of Australia, an adventure in as well as getting a car ready to compete in the competition. Meet a whole heap of different people from around the world who have different experiences and want to share what they did as well. Solar cars are quite popular、uh, in Belgium. I learned、uh, of it in my sixth grade, I think, and I really thought, okay, I want to do engineering, I want to join that race. And then yeah, I studied、uh, mechanical, mechanical engineering for five years and then got the chance to, join,、uh, to actually join the team. Um, but I already dreamed of it、um, years before、uh, that date. So, the Michigan Solar Car team has been around for about 30 years, participated in 12 WSCs. I believe we have, prior to this, six world podium finishes. It's,、uh, it's exciting. Yeah, we wanted to do something really special, really cool,、um, next to university. And some of our team、uh, had done、uh, similar projects in college before. So, yeah, that was really cool, and this is like the, one of the biggest student competitions there is, so it's, it's really challenging. We are the IVE Engineering Solar Car Team, and、uh, so we built our car called Sophie, and this year we are racing Sophie 6S, which we, we use a、uh, body shell from 2017, but we've changed and upgraded everything inside. We're formed from the、um, Institute of Vocational Education from Hong Kong, and、um, our team consists of 28 members, and two of them being、uh, local support from RMIT. It was,、uh, it was hot when we first got in Darwin, but、um, immediately everyone was so、uh, enthusiastic about the whole thing, and you could feel the spirit in the whole team that it was finally getting real. So, we were in Darwin, I think, four to five weeks before the start, and we started getting our car ready, getting everything ready, getting the team ready,、um, but it felt really good. Uh, today, we are at Gunpoint Road. It's、uh, one of our strategic testing days. That's also why we are up so early,、uh, because in the morning there is a lot less wind, and that's very important for the、yeah, data validation for our strategic、um, guys.、Uh, they're、uh, logging all the data so we know how fast we can go and how much energy our car will consume during the race. Our first month already passed,、um, it was very successful for us. Uh, we started with some mechanical testing on an airstrip here in Darwin, on MKT, and、um, since the 1st of October, we are on road testing here、uh, at Gunpoint Road, and it's already our fifth testing day here, so yeah, going good. Our car is a little smaller, it's more aerodynamic. We also made the solar panel for the first time on our own. It's yeah, totally developed on our own, so we hope to get more energy in and less energy out so we can finish faster than last year. We still have the same mindset as in 2017, but 
the car is more on the limit, there are, it's more aerodynamic, more performance. It's quite nice to be here. We already worked for 15 months and now it's yeah, moment to shine and the car is going good, the team is going good, so it's very nice to be here. Hidden Valley, a absolutely state-of-the-art motorsport complex, a jewel in the crown of the Northern Territory of Australia. A fantastic racetrack, it hosts one of the rounds of the V8 Supercar Championship and a whole load of other stuff. So it's a great track for us to be testing our solar cars. And of course it has all the infrastructure required for uh, full-on professional motor racing with all the pit garages and all the facilities and the floodlights. So that makes a great base for us to set up in Darwin and generally have a place to call home for two weeks as they prepare for the greatest adventure of their lives. With Statics Scrutineering, you, they, you, know, you take your car and you present it to the scientific faculty and they've written these rules that govern you know, what you are not allowed to do, how many solar panels you're allowed to have, how big your battery can be. Uh, and you, know, it, you, know, you bring it and you show it off and they pick it apart and look at every little system. And so naturally, if you're doing it right as a challenger team, I'd say, uh, you know, they're, you're butting heads a little bit. You're not necessarily fully in compliance with every rule and there's some arguments to be had. And so, you know, the first day we went and we got a couple red stickers, which means, you know, you didn't pass that system. Uh, but you know, by the second day we came back and we had made some small changes and we had brought some new arguments and, uh, and we made it through. through all right. The weight of the car has traditionally been important because the lighter the car, the less energy is required to move it. But it seems to have gone to extremes this year and there's quite a competition between the top teams to see who's actually going to come out with the lightest car. So we thought we'd weigh around 135. Um, and we weigh 131.5, 1. so we're like so light, like <laughs> everyone's super happy. So I'm just whew, just was a bit emotional, but uh, I'm actually shaking. Static scrutinizing was hell. Um, we went through every station, and every station we got a red dot. I think the only one we got a green dot was the roadworthiness, which is pretty funny because you'd hope that that one would be the last one you get a, a green dot at. The scrutineers weren't happy with anything that we did, which is fair. There's a book of rules and we pushed the limits a bit. Ah, oh, here we go. I'm a bit nervous. No. Wow. Really? Oh, man, we must have really? 50 yeah. kilos Amazing. somewhere. Really? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay, can I have this one? Wait, are you legit? Yeah. Western Sydney! 160.8! Yeah! Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! 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 Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Yeah! The, the scrutiny goes, here you go, here's your ticket. 116.8. I'm like, what? 116.8? What are you on about? <laughs> We're expecting to be like 130, 125. We haven't weighed the car because we've been driving the entire way. And to the point where I asked him, can you re-weigh it again? And he said, no, this, this machine is 100%. I've weighed all the other cars. This is your ticket. That's it. You're done. And for us, that was a magical moment because we just built the lightest solar car ever. Um, and not by five kilos, by like 15. So that was pretty remarkable for us. I really liked Hidden Valley. Um, so we were there uh, before the challenge really started before the event period started to do testing um, because we've been in Australia for a, quite, a, quite a while and um, then it was just a track but then when the event really started it was so great to see everyone there to see all the teams and to meet each other to see all the cars um, so it was great to be there and feel the vibe of the event.
And then the team manager come and see me and I'll give you the running order. He's handing out the running order for the starting grid. Um, and then we will go to, once everybody signed on, we will um, go through the, the briefing of how the day runs. And then after that, we'll head out and everybody will start to have a play on the racetrack. I love this part of the day. The teams get really excited, they make a lot of noise, they do their war cries on the start line. Yeah, it's, it's real good fun. Have you boys signed on? This morning is dynamic scrutineering. We just had a briefing and we got the list of, you know, what orders all the cars are gonna go and we're all gonna go out there, do some uh, laps around the track and then also do a slalom and braking test to see, you know, the stability of all the cars. Minnesota is kind of in the middle of the pack with a 20th to go. I was looking at the list. Um, it seems kind of randomized, but yeah, that is a strategy. We wanna see how fast all the other cars go because the car that has the fastest lap time will get to be the first one to go off the start of the race. There's a lot of cruisers this time compared to last time, and uh, there's a big field of competition. You know, of course, there's you know the Honda Solari that we faced at the American Solo Challenge. You know, we're watching them. You know, Cal Sol is also a new one in, but they got a really nice car. And then of course there's Einhoven and uh, Bochum. You know, they're really the the top teams there. You know, we're all watching them all. Yeah, as you can see, the Stanford team is pretty excited right now, um, playing some good music, having a good time. We're just excited to see our, our Jasmine uh, put down a good number for the track. So we've been working for a full two years. Um, it's really exciting to see it, it finally come together, finally ready to race. You know, we spent the first year in the, the design phase and the second year mostly manufacturing, so um, it's been a long time. Yeah, dynamic scrutineering is a very special day. Everybody is very excited in the first place, but also a bit stressed out as those cars are designed to, to drive on the Stewart Highway, but not on a track. So it's a very difficult job to find the, uh, the line between going fast, getting that pole position and being, yeah, being taking not too many risks as the day after dynamic scrutineering the race already starts and if you get some technical issues during dynamic uh, it can be game over that day is a crazy day um, you've got all these teams you've got 40 odd teams um, the whole crew is there all the cars are there the spectators it's just mayhem all the cars are out on track, they're all doing their, their hot laps and they're doing their dynamic brake tests and swerve tests. Cars are braking, <laughs> so teams are braking down as well, so it's just a bit of a sort of mayhem sort of day. You see a lot of the top teams don't get any pressure from it because they've done these tests, they've done everything like this, but sort of the, the newer teams and the growing teams are starting to see those sort of problems evolve. Vattenfall, they're the world's best. They've won this event seven times. Seven times. That's absolutely incredible. So you have to say that if they've got everything, their, their attention to detail uh, is as good as it's ever been, who's going to beat them? So there's high drama in testing. Vattenfall were out on the track and doing very well and looking very good. And on one of their high speed runs in preparation for their qualifying lap, they spun out and crashed. That would have been a huge emotional moment. It was for all of us because we didn't know at that point how serious that was going to be and whether that was going to affect their, even their participation, that alone how well they did. We just drove the time that we were practicing on and we were hoping to get and he just smashed it. And as you know, two days ago we had the crash on this same track in the last corner and Max was really tense, it was a, like, a bit of a shock to get such an experience, he was going really fast and today he just drove like nothing happened and just, we were really proud of him, it was really, really good. I had literally no idea how Okara would, would do against the others. Um, we did some testing before and we knew Okara had like, the, the, the pace was good, we could do a, a great time, uh, the driver was feeling good. Um, so we had already a, a very good time uh, before the race. We knew that the car was uh, able to, um, to set a good time. And then at the Dynamics Scrutineum we uh, did a, a lap record and that was amazing. It was like a, a victory already. 
I, uh, I came back to the, to the garage here and the guys was like, yeah, park the car in the garage because we have to cool and stuff. So yeah, I parked it and I was like, yeah, but what's my time? And they didn't tell me. Then I saw two of our, uh, two guys of our team, they're like hugging each other and falling down together. And I was like, oh, something must be good, but what's, what's my time? And then finally somebody told me, yeah, you drove 151. So I had to catch up some sleep from last night because last night I didn't sleep at all. <laughs> like I was, uh, I was quite uh, thinking about the lab. So today was amazing, being there with all the teams, uh, up at the balcony, cheering for each other. That's great, uh, that really makes you feel it's right now. Tonight we'll be in bed early, so fixing the last stop uh, here, the car needs to be checked to start tomorrow. Our convoy vehicles uh, will be packed and then uh, it's time to sleep and uh, yeah, the best preparation uh, for the challenge will be enough sleep. Josh, well, there is a flurry of activity here in State Square in Darwin, which is the official start line for this 3,000 kilometre race from Darwin to Adelaide. All of the teams are now filling up this car park behind me, and right behind me is the brand new Dutch team that will lead the field out from Darwin. Now, that's a big advantage because these solar cars, just like any other uh, diesel or, or petrol car, use more energy when they're overtaking, if they have to accelerate to pass more cars. So having the lead is a huge advantage in this race. But it's a 3,000 kilometre race, so there's a lot that can go wrong. One poorly timed kangaroo bounding out in front of a solar car and it could be race over for these teams that have spent, in some cases, two or three years working on their cars. I've been part of this event for 30 years. You know, I've, this is my 11th trip to Australia. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been here and done that. And uh, well, this is our 15th car. And to get an opportunity to design from, from scratch a vehicle and, and race it when you're still in college is an incredible thing. We placed third five times. We placed second in 2017. I don't know. We are going to go pretty good, I think. We are in fourth place to start, the exact place that we wanted. We have a lot of experience, the car is ready, the team is ready, so we're, we're ready to roll. A little bit nervous, I'm also the driver, I'm driving the first part of the race, so it's definitely uh, excited driving in all the traffic. We are starting from second position. We got a great qualifying yesterday, and yeah, we, we are very happy. So I think we will uh, beat the Dutch. <laughs> yeah, we got to be together Dutch. That's our, our goal. Yeah, because the Dutch, uh, especially Wattenfall, are winning all the time. And now the Germans are the German. Spannend, but uh, yeah, it is wel leuk, want uh, we gaan ervoor. All the media, shift, and all the mensen that you can do it. Ah, that's toch leuk. Ik vind het prachtig. Iedereen die gaat hiervoor, iedereen in het team doet zijn best. Ja, wij ook. Je moeder is hier speciaal zoals ingekomen. Ja, klopt. Die, uh... Kan je wat meer vertellen? Huh? Ah, mijn moeder loopt hier ook rond. Die uh, is mooi aan het kijken hoe het gaat. En uh, ja, die is natuurlijk ook hartstikke trots. We basically rebuilt the whole car, rebuilt the whole motor, um, got to throughout the night. Um, a few of us got some sleep. We then had to pack up the workshop as well. So another thing to add to the list and then also pack up all our gear back at where we're staying. So it was just a nightmare of, you know, packing and fixing and trying to figure out logistics and all those sort of things, getting people up and ready, making sure everyone's safe to drive. We got to the start line and we still had three things to tick off on scrutineering, unfortunately. Anyway, that pushed us to the back of the grid, so we started in last place instead of ninth, which made day one very interesting. 
underneath, underneath the board. Relieve some pressure off it. In again. Wait, wait, wait. But take it easy. Get so smaller side cutters. Is Man. It's more side cutters, no. Side cutters, any side cutters. Yeah, relax. Get, get me another cable tie. No, another cable tie. I should have in my pocket. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, relax. I'm relaxed. Put everything back. Put everything back. Wait, Max, do I walk with him? Uh, no, no. So Dan, stay really hard left. Out of here, there's a, there's a nice bump. Okay. Jason, stay left. Yes. Okay. Come on, let's go. Okay, am I going? Yeah, you have to come with us. Okay. Yes, throttle. Right, check your throttle. Dump that back in. Okay. All right, we'll right, see you guys. Come down, yeah. come down, come down. Come down. Yeah. Pull the ball, pull the string. Yeah. Uh, you're in the other side. Yep, no, good. Side. Check his array on, his array on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. We're going to move. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Oh, What's the. Um, Alright, let's go. Okay, bro. And a delightful team. We wish you well, Western Sydney. And, uh, we'll see you down the track. Day one, in State Square, and then the teams were released one at a time, ostensibly with enough time to meet up with their lead and chase vehicles. We do have the benefit of a divided highway for the first 60 kilometers, and then that allows teams to overtake each other, to group up with their other team vehicles and settle themselves down for their first long drag down to Catherine. The road between Darwin and Catherine is the windiest and the hilliest on the whole route. In fact, Hayes Creek Hill is the steepest hill in the whole 3,000 kilometres. Passing through Pine Creek, teams are starting to settle down into the rhythm of the event. But it's also clear to some that they might not make the 5pm cutoff time to get to the first checkpoint in Catherine. Control stops in the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge are our checkpoints, there's nine of them. Competitive team will come into a control stop and be guided into their park firm A position where they must remain for 30 minutes. The driver must get out of the car unaided and go to the timing point and hit the button which starts their time. And they're there for 30 minutes. We've been driving uh yeah, pretty, pretty hot today. It's, uh, it's good weather, so uh, yeah, it's a dream start. We couldn't have imagined this any better. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's, it's, yeah, I don't have any words for it. It's just great that we're in our first place. And, uh, and we're a bit ahead of the, uh, the competition as well. So uh, yeah, that's, that's just a great feeling. Coming out of the control stop in Catherine, the conditions change quite dramatically. The roads are less busy and less hilly, and we have those huge, long, straight stretches of road for which the Northern Territory is famous. And Solar Team 20 capitalised on the fact they were first out of Catherine and pushed their lead to the end of day and finished several kilometres in front of their rivals. Yeah, it was like uh, the start was really hectic. Uh, we started fifth, only at the start it was really busy with all the uh, camera lights, etc. And we overtook like two teams really quickly. And then we were for a few, for the first 100 kilometers, we were, we were uh, behind Agoria, the Belgium solar team. And like then we uh, overtook them and we haven't seen any other team ever since. Like the first control stop, we arrived and the next team, I think it was Top Dutch from uh, Groningen, they arrived second. And like the second control stop was the first car to arrive again top Dutch and they arrived also after 20 minutes so we built up a kind of gap today. Uh, we are setting up a camp for the night. Uh, yeah, we traveled like more than 600 kilometers uh, uh, today and uh, around 5 o'clock you need to stop from the organization then your day is over. 
and now we are setting up for tonight. So we are setting up the sleeping tents for the whole team. And they are there, they are setting up the workshop tent. And there the car will be serviced overnight to make sure that it will perform as good uh, tomorrow as it did today. It's really nice conditions, like we have no trees over here. So like there you have a lot of trees and there you have a lot of trees. But we are putting our solar array uh, in the sun now. So we have sun for a really long time. So therefore this is a perfect uh, location to stop. So right now we're at the first overnight stop uh, of the World Solar Challenge. And uh, actually we're here with uh, two other teams. So that's pretty special, I think. I don't think it has ha ever happened. We started today on the eighth position and right now we're on the second position. So it's been like a crazy race today. Can't even keep up with uh, who, who we're overtaking. Uh, so just five kilometers back, we, we passed Top Dutch. So that's why I'm confused. Uh, tomorrow we can start in front of all the cars here and hopefully it will stay that way. Uh, 20 is number one. They are really, really far in front, like tw uh, 30 minutes. So it's going to be really exciting to see when we'll get close to them. Uh, but right now all our strategists are doing uh, all the work to ensure we, we maximize our power efficiency. Yep. This is a pretty special moment. This is the final ra rays of the sun uh, of day one. Uh, the reason our panel is lifted this way is so we can catch as much sun as we, as we need. Uh, tomorrow the sun will come up over there, so we'll be facing the other way. And uh, charging like this is, is a really good way to get some energy, because you're not using any energy and you're just you're getting a fairly amount of power. Of course, uh, midday there's a lot more sun than right now, so uh, it's about all the seconds that matter. Everyone is fairly positive, um, still I think very anxious about the race. Uh, of course we want to be first, we have a big track record to to, to live up to. Um, so yeah, everybody is a bit on edge, I think, to, to do as good as possible. Um, but in a few hours, we'll have a, a team discussion, discuss all things that went really well today, but also all things that, that could be improved. So we'll do better tomorrow. Uh, but overall, uh, the, it's a very good uh, atmosphere right now. It was a very interesting day. So we started at P4. Uh, we had a very amazing start, got before all the teams very early uh, in the city already. So we, get out, we got out of the city very fast. And then um, Top Dutch, Wattenfall and Twente overtook us. Um, Twente has a very interesting strategy. Uh, they are currently driving, I think, 30 minutes ahead of us. And then Top Dutch and Wattenfall is uh, apparently driving a bit of the same strategy as us. So it's a very interesting day today. We're going from Daily Waters to Tennant Creek, so that's only one stage of almost five hours driving. So it's going to be a long one for the drivers in Stella Era. We don't have air conditioning, so it's getting really warm in there. Uh, I think it's about 40 plus 50 degrees in there, so it's like a sauna. <laughs> yeah, we feel the pressure because we have been world champions uh, three times already. Um, but we're definitely not sure that we're going to make it again this year. So we're really excited and we're really thrilled to work hard on that. The cruiser class teams are on a regularity trial. They have to get to Tennant Creek, which is a thousand kilometers from Darwin, within a certain time window. When they get to Tennant Creek, they are gonna be engaged in the first live experiment of smart grid charging. So from the provisional data with the determinants of success in the cruiser class, it's very hard to say who's winning, but clearly Eindhoven are looking very good. Between second and third, we'd have to say that SunSwift from University of New South Wales, Australia, and IVE, uh, College of Engineering from Hong Kong, those two would have to be absolute contenders in that space. But of course, they're still going to have to do their practicality judging when they get to Adelaide. Of course, one of the things that uh, rarely happens in the World Solar Challenge is that teams are together in one place. So this is very refreshing to see the cruiser class teams together in Tennant Creek because they can now swap notes, have some social interaction while the cars are being charged and prepare themselves for their second stage, which is 1,200 kilometres. Tonight we can charge on the sun till about six o'clock and then we can 
charge off a, a electric vehicle charger till about 12 o'clock and then we'll lock the car up till the night um, and then in the morning we start again off to Alice Springs. We've got 1200 kilometres to do in the next two days so on that one charge. Yeah there's a few good looking cruisers, um, the Dutch as always and then there's the unexpected Sophie, they came up from behind earlier today and then the Germans as usual they're doing pretty well. <laughs> That's not <laughs> too hard. a good idea. Uh, do it with the plastic hammer. I'm trying to to fix my camp tent. Oh, not so much, honestly, because it it has been a, a really hard day, and well, it would be better to have uh, a nice bed. But well, here at least we are in the middle of nowhere, but with some vegetation at least. It's not like the real bush. Einhoven, yeah, they, they're just gonna take it away. <laughs> but uh, we'll try our best to dethrone them and uh, hopefully we could get um, as close as uh, we could this year. Uh, actually, I was um, originally in Sunswift in 2011 and then uh, I started a team with uh, Education Institute in Hong Kong, uh, which is Sophie. And so, yeah, we overtook them just, uh, just before, um, around two, three hours um, um, before we arrived at Tennant Creek. I'm still part Sunswift, part Sophie, so it's always uh, my favorite teams. <laughs> well, it's uh, complicated. It's like um, seeing your, you know, your, your, your brothers and sisters fighting <laughs> and who should you be helping but um, I think um, at the end of the day like finishing the race what we target and we are going well um, with our plan so we're, I'm very happy. Well it's uh, 6.30 right now and we are in Tennant Creek and today is our charging day so we are going to charge uh, our car so we can drive uh, for the uh, two days that will follow to uh, Cooper P. Uh, all of the solo cars have surprised me because, well, um, we have got here so far. That's that's uh, that's a long distance so far. So I'm, yeah, I'm I'm very happy to see all all teams working so hard on that car and getting them here. So I'm 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 a bit proud of uh, all the teams. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we beat world number two in America. So why shouldn't we beat them here? Um, the car was at a, at a much higher standard. The, the products we were delivering was better and it was just, there was a lot of pressure on, on not only us, but like on, there was about eight to 10 teams. There was a lot of pressure on who's gonna win, who's gonna win, who's gonna win. The problem started arising end of day one. So we got into um, Daily Waters, which is second control stop um, in eighth place. So we went from 43rd to eighth in one day, which is pretty remarkable. We had to do a motor repair because it was still damaged from the heat and as well do some um, software configuration and end up being that the, the motor problem actually destroyed a lot more of the electronics than we thought about. You know, that carried on through into day two and the day two we didn't get on the road till like 4.30. Hit, hit someone, get this car, this guy here. Hurry up bro, run, run. I'm oh, pretty excited. It's fun to drive, so yeah, <laughs> I look forward to it. Getting in the car and yeah, being back on the road, it's, it's just great. Uh, oh yeah, this one is a back brace. It's, uh, it corrects my sitting position. And this is just food and like energy uh, stuff. I miss the bars. Because it's going to be a long drive, uh, I have to eat something uh, when I'm on the way.
a very exciting time at the leading end of the field with to enter comfortably in their stride and maintaining their lead. But over their shoulder, Vattenfall seem to have been pulling something out of the hat because they've been catching up quite slowly, consistently during the afternoon and taking maybe 20 minutes off their separation. This morning we decided to approach 20 and it was still 22 minutes I think so we didn't think we could close that within one day but now we're only two minutes apart or one and a half kilometers so that's almost nothing um, but we had planned to, to end up further down the road but the weather was crazy so a lot of wind and I think 20 stopped for two minutes to fix their canopy that blew open and the same thing happened to us just down the road here so we decided to make this our end of day stop and just get off the road and fix it but it was yeah it was an amazing day and our strategy worked really well so we have uh, we have confidence in the last two days which will bring much more but it's really exciting to be this close together. Yeah, because we had some problems the first day, but we are really confident in our car. We think it's the best car in the field, but we lost some time on the first day and now we made it, made it up. So uh, it's equal now and we'll see what the last two days will bring. Really, really stressful. Yeah. The, the, the battle got open during driving, I think three hours ago. And then we had to fix that and then the wind just kept coming up. We went to, I think, a couple of sandstorms. Uh, yeah, it was just crazy and we definitely didn't expect it. And we had a camping location uh, quite a distance away because we thought, oh, just cruise with our cruising speed. And then, with, okay, suddenly 10 minutes to go, we need to change the location and then crazy. But now I'm quite happy the car is still intact that we're here with all the cars. Well, today was a very exciting day. We started uh, in first position. Uh, after that, we uh, went to, uh, on, until Kugera. Uh, we arrived there first too. Uh, Vattenfall had closed up a bit on us. The Belgians too, I believe. I don't know exactly, but they were a bit the same. And uh, well, after that, we uh, went on onwards to Kubrick PD. And well, as, as we entered the wide opens, well, the wind started to increase. And at one moment, we had a dangerous situation with a big dust cloud. And we had to make a quick stop, but it was apparently enough of Vattenfall to get right behind us. So uh, after a quick, quick uh, checkup, we managed to continue the road with uh, full speed. And uh, after that, we, uh, we stopped on, uh, it's, I think, one minute after five. And Vattenfall continued, so they're ahead of us, but not in terms of the, uh, the game. We're still in the first position, but uh, we have to drive fast tomorrow morning, because otherwise they will be on the, on the road in front of us and we have to overtake them and we don't want that. <laughs> I think the intensest part of the race so far, we, uh, the, one of the first things I said after we had the big w wind house, we were like, okay, now the game really begins because we saw Valleville appear in our rear mirror and now uh, it's just a neck and neck race and uh, we're luckily we're still on first, but I'm uh, curious how it will continue. Okay, okay. Oh, down, down, down. Kai was ahead of us when we pulled into the control stop, but because our right opens to the right, at all three control stops thus far, we've been able to get a little bit of speed on people, and we were able to just pass Tokai here essentially for free, simply because we were able to pull up, hop out, open the array stand, and point in the right direction, whereas they had to turn around. So it's really, really nice to have a free overtake because it means that we are essentially back in the driver's seat of our relationship between them. Uh, if they want to pass us again, they're going to have to both find an opportunity to do so and also use up a bit more energy to speed up around us. And that can be huge. That like straight up could be the difference between us finishing in front of and behind Tokai. So we're extremely happy to end up in front of them here. 特に4日目、え、恐怖、ま、すごい風が強い時があったんですが、ま、自分たちはその横風も想定していたので、ま、90キロ、100キロというスピードでも安定して走行することができる車体なので、ま、そこで順位を一気に上げて、ま、2位という
day of the race, we just left our, our campsite and I think it was only 20 minutes later when there was, uh, it was very windy and uh, one time it blew the car off the road and um, when it get, got off the road, uh, the driver, he spinned 180 degrees and then the car rolled over. Luckily, he was unharmed. We were very happy to hear that and we were very proud that we built a safe, uh, safe solar car. But it was very shocking for the whole team because you are in first place for so long and you know you can, you can arrive first at the finish line and then something like that happens. And yeah, that's not, not a nice thing, but I think it made the team stronger because the, the second it happened, all the team members were there for each other, comforting each other, um, helping everyone out. So that was actually a good thing about, uh, about the accident. I heard about Twente's accident about 15 minutes after it happened. And to hear that, you know, team number one rolled their car is um, pretty nerve wracking. And to see not only Twente, but a lot of the other teams that were at the top of the pack wreck their cars is pretty scary. In the morning, uh, we heard about uh, Twente from our scouting car and everything became silent. It was one moment that nobody said anything and only hoped that the pilot would be okay. Uh, it was, the conditions were very heavy for every team. Certainly in the top five, all those cars were driving so fast. As a team, I have to keep in mind that pushing those limits also proposes some risks. Um, and also our team was very close to the limits uh, several times. So we only thought, okay, I hope the pilot is okay and let's finish, finish this race without taking too many risks. Um, we were planning on overtaking 20 today, we were two minutes behind, so we had a whole strategy that was going to keep up with them and then overtake them before uh, Port Augusta. And two minutes later we heard someone uh, of our convoy that was uh, following them uh, say that uh, 20 is out, 20 is out, uh, they're on the side of the road, they're on the side of the road. So the whole car was shocked and everyone like obviously thought, oh, well, well, well <laughs> what's happening? Um, so then we carried on, we knew we were about four kilometers away from them. And then when we went past with Nuna, we saw them on the side of the road. Um, the car that had seen it, that was following their convoy, stayed with them for a little bit and tried to help them out. We were thinking it would be just a really fun last couple of days, like trying to chase each other and then the may the best car win. And you don't wish this on your opponent. So um, I feel super sorry for them that this happened. And I'm glad that they're all okay. Um, they're all out safely. Um, yeah, and for us, we'll see what tomorrow will be. This is my first, uh, well, would be my first win if, uh, if we do. Um, and you spend 14 months of your life on this car, building it, works 60 to 70 hours a week. So it would mean lots, but uh, the Belgians have come really close today. Um, we have a seven minute head start of them, uh, only 300 kilometers to go. So. Yeah, we'll see where we end up. They managed to make up quite a bit of ground. However, when we um, sort of closed the gap with Twente, we did because we had tailwind of 20 kilometers an hour, so we could drive really efficiently. And today there was a lot of headwind. So um, they drove really hard or fast on a day where there was headwind. So that's sort of worse for your battery, um, is what we believe. So I don't know how much is left in their battery. Um, so I don't know what they'll do tomorrow. I guess it depends on how much we can charge tonight. I think it's possible. We saw that Bottomfall maybe has very less or very tiny capacity in their battery. Um, so yeah, it's, everything is possible tomorrow. It will be very hard as it's only uh, 300 k's left. Um, so it's hard to overtake another team. But it's possible. Everything, everything has to go right. The team has to be, yeah, 100% focused. The car has to be good. The driver has to be good. Um, so if everything goes right, I think it's possible. Yeah, we fixed all the issues we had yesterday. So. Today it's looking like it'll be a smooth run. Um, about 60 k south of Tennant Creek we've got some roadworks on dirt road. So we've got to trick up our sleeve to get through that dirt road and hopefully, hopefully it can give us a bit of a 
head start above other teams. Not as quick as the tyre change we did earlier. We might be future Red Bull Racing Formula One tyre changes. Um, but yeah, we're, we've got five minutes left and we're ready to move out. One car behind, uh, we're just behind Eindhoven, which are the leading car. So hopefully we can keep hot on their heels. So our cruiser class cars have settled into their own rhythm but the last 1,200 kilometres have taken a toll on many of them, and there's really only three contenders now. The Eindhoven car still, it has to be said, are looking probably comfortably in the lead, and IVE from Hong Kong and Sunswift from the University of New South Wales in Australia. We just missed our control stop. Uh, we're just chucking a Yui back in, and uh, yeah, time's tight. We've got a minute. Uh, we made it pretty close, I think one minute to go before the deadline. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. Yeah, we got a bit lost. Had to come to the charging station, overshot the turn and had to go down a gravel road, hit a few, hit a few rocks. Tonight we'll be charging for another six hours or something and then take the car back to camp and wake up in the morning and do the dance all over again. Because the arched one literally uh, just like uh, went uh, over the canopy uh, of the other one. Uh, we were seven and a half minutes ahead of Agoria yesterday, but Nuna rolled away during a control stop and we put stuff in front of the wheels without touching Nuna um, and now they've reset our control stop time so we're starting five minutes later than we used to start because we because um, Nuna was driving away. Um, it's not going to change our tactics uh, it just will make us feel a little bit more nervous and excited because seven and a half minutes is still quite a gap two and a half minutes is not so now it really depends on who anticipates on traffic best and who's able to overtake who. So Vattenfall got a five minute penalty, but they are two minutes ahead of us, uh, which makes it uh, yeah, really possible for us to overtake them in the next 300 kilometers. absolutely devastating for these kids to watch the car go up in flames. There was nothing to be done. Uh, they came out with their fire extinguishers but could just only stand and watch from a safe distance. We saw the smoke, that's what, what we first saw and we knew okay, that's not good. I hope it's not another Söller car that yeah, had an accident or, or what else and then Two minutes later, we passed uh, yeah, the spot where their car, where Nuna X caught fire. And again, we thought, I hope the pilot is okay. As, yeah, every team has the same year. You work for 50 months in that car, and that's the last thing you want to see on your last racing day. This was the culmination of two years' work. Three million dollars. Sitting on the side of the Augusta Highway, burning fiercely. And the Agoria team, who are well experienced in this event, who've never found success, find themselves in the lead. All they have to do is maintain focus. All they have to do 
is ensure that they have enough energy to cross the finish line in Adelaide. Yeah, what an experience. Yeah, it feels amazing. After these five very hard days, real challenge, it feels amazing to get as team as first over the finish line. the line the first one the car actually went across under its own power this time the car was in no state to drive it's still not in a state to drive so the team all carry the car across the line which is a pretty um, pretty moving moment for the team um, but hopefully not one that they experience again that for all of course the team arrived in Adelaide with no car to show. But after two years' work, it was only fair that the kids get to run down the finish line. It was a very emotional scene. And the team presented me <laughs> with a gift. And the gift was the half-melted license plate I don't want to give you this. <laughs> so, as a thank you. Yeah, this is crazy. I mean, our car is gone. Nice mode. We didn't finish the race, but the team is amazing and we should celebrate. This is what we have done. Today is the practicality judgment um, and it's the half of our score actually. So yesterday we finished the efficiency score and today is the, the practicality judgment which is really exciting because it can show all the interior features of the car that no one has seen yet. They're looking for a comfortable and stylish car but also in new innovations. We don't know of course uh, what they will be uh, scoring on but yeah and our competitors are also really good. They have really beautiful cars uh, so we'll see. It's been a really rough ride to go through the challenge and all the preparations to change itself has been rough conditions so it's really a relief to have made the 3000 kilometer drive already and now the practicality went great so yeah it will be really exciting to to win for the fourth time ladies gentlemen so the challenge is all welcome to the adelaide convention center and our celebration of the 15th edition the 2019 bridgestone World Challenge. We are celebrating the outstanding accomplishment of each team and its team members to travel 3,000 kilometers from Darwin to Adelaide just using sun for power. It is an amazing challenge. It is cool, crazy, and tough challenge. You should be very proud of what you have done. You all are winners. You all are pioneers in the frontier. We will keep on working with you guys. So together, let's keep on dreaming bigger, going further, and developing the next generation of mobility solution. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being with us tonight. And please enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you, guys. The Challenger class in third place with an overall time of 37 hours, 56 minutes, University of Michigan. So in second place with an overall time of 35 hours and four minutes, to the second, Tokai University. So we move to the winner of the Challenger class for 2019 Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. The team who, despite making it look easy, have put so much effort into this event over many years. This year completing the course in 34 hours, 52 minutes and 42 seconds, 
from Belgium, please welcome Team Agoria. The third place in the cruiser class with an efficiency score of 44.2 and a practicality score of 63.4 was Ivy. Second place in the cruiser class with an efficiency score of 56.1 and a practicality score of 69.5 was Sunswift. <laughs> Presentation to the winner of the cruiser class in this 2019 competition. In first place with an efficiency score of 111.7 and a practicality a practicality score of 93.1. So the team Eindhoven. climate issue was getting worse and worse so this is, so we sat down and said like can we can we do it ourselves so we founded a company called Lightyear and we're now uh, actually building solar cars for the road that uh, uh, using the same concept we developed for the world solar challenge I think solar cars are important because they they give hope a hope of a better future hope of a, uh, a car that doesn't need any charging infrastructure a car that uh, that is completely sustainable so for the for the bigger masses it's it's hope and for for the car industry, it's, it's a great example. We're on the verge of getting there and the first solar cars are actually going to hit the market in two years. Uh, but it will be there for the masses in five to 10 years probably. So that, that'll be exciting. From the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge, you learn a lot. And also, yeah, I, I already thought within the team, you learn a lot, but also connecting to other people and really, uh, yeah, fe feeling the experience, that's something that I, I don't think I will ever experience in my life again. The Bridgestone World Solar Challenge is the, the hardest challenge I'll face in my lifetime. And so I'd say I feel very privileged to have been able to, to take that on. When I joined the challenge, I was almost graduated. I didn't know what I'm going to go into. But after I finished the challenge, I know um, what my career is going to be. I, I know um, I wanted to do something to make the world a better place educate younger generation about uh, renewable energy and uh, sustainable developments. The entire experience of building the car last year and then participating in the challenge, it was actually gave me the insight of what a challenge my life will be in the coming years. So the things uh, I can do, but the things everyone can do, the potential that we all have is so enormous that we should really use it. <laughs> it's not just a challenge of the last week, but it's a challenge for your entire life. We worked for it for 15 months. I think I, I cannot uh, imagine the day of vacation we had the last 15 months. So now we'll get some rest. I will discover Australia, and, uh, not only on the Stuart Highway, but also the other beautiful places in Australia. And yeah, in a month we'll go back to Belgium and redefine our goals for the next race. For me, it's a challenge where students will devote their entire lives to building one of the most efficient cars on the planet and racing across the continent. You don't get to do that anywhere else. Yeah.